Hi everyone, welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine, and I am so blessed to have one of my favorite people in the world, not just athletes, not just, he's so accomplished. Let me let me rattle off a little bit of his accomplishments here. He is a soon to be published author. We'll talk about that in a second. He is a public speaker. He is a transformational coach, and he is a three-time natural physique po and natural meaning drug free so that's what clean machine is all about accomplishing amazing physiques and fitness levels through natural approaches um, being free of drugs he also recently joined me in the fit over 50 club <laughs> booyah and has been vegan for over six years now so welcome monk I just, I'm trying to figure out who you're talking about right now. <laughs> yes, Thank you, you brother. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, you know, when I I first saw your pictures and and saw what you were posting about, you are it was the one in the park, I believe, with you holding the sign. Do you remember that one? What sign was I holding? Uh, the animal. Uh, Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was in L.A. That was, yes, that was at uh, uh, Venice Beach, actually. And I was like, wow, this this guy is really coming from a, <clears throat> a heart space. But, you know, and then I looked through yeah. more of your pictures and, uh, you know, I was like, oh, my God, this, this guy's got it all going on. You've got an amazing heart, incredible mind with through your meditation you got you go so deep on your sharing, which I love and I so link with, so aligned with, and um, and you do this all naturally. So it's body, soul, mind, it's everything. Um, and uh, and I reached out to you, and I was like, wow, have you ever considered going on stage? <laughs> do, 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 do you do do you remember how that conversation went down, though? Talk to me. You said something would you be interested in being uh uh ambassador or whatever and then i've and i said i knew something good was going to happen today and then i asked you and then i said after that i said what kind of question is that of course <laughs> i would i would be interested and then we had a conversation for about what 30 30 minutes or so yes and uh I, i've been here ever since and dave it's been such a blessing i mean our friendship, I love the conversations that you and I have when we just pick up the phone and dial in and just just chat, just what's going on, what's going on with the world, what's going on inside us, what's going on in our families and relationships. I love that. You're such an open book, and uh, I know that there's a lot of people who really respect you, and um, not only for your accomplishments, but for your vulnerability in letting other people know where you came from. So let's let's talk about that real quick. Tell us that story from going from the streets to where you well, really awakened. You, the funny part about it is, is even when I was doing things that I, I wasn't shouldn't be doing, I knew that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think deep down inside, everybody knows because that's not who we are. Right. right. We're conditioned. We're programmed. Everybody at the deepest level knows that that's not who they are. And a lot of times it takes something very serious for them to to really see that. Totally. You know, we're so we got this this image, this fake story that we all uh, uh, claim. And then we have to to our life has to align with that story, whatever that story is. Yes. So a lot of times we do things that we know is not aligning with our spirit, but we do it anyways because we feel right. that's what we need to do. So a little bit, I was born in the 60s like yourself. I barely made the 60s though. You're still way older than me. <laughs> but, you know, at three and a half years old, my father passed away and there was like seven of us. There was not like seven of us. There were seven of us total, but I never had a father figure mm -hmm. after that point. And I didn't think it really affected me, but, um, as a young kid, I was really out of control, like five, six years old. I was already stealing, um, fighting. Uh, I tried to stab my brother. True story. I really got, they, when my mom took us to church the next day, the next Sunday, everybody in the church was like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, that's not good. And that's not of God. And, 
you know, all these different things. Um, but when I got to a certain age, going to church every Sunday, and when I finally understood what they were saying about you're going to go to hell if you don't change, guess what I did? I straightened up. <laughs> I straightened up, but it was out of fear. So now I'm walking around, I'm, I'm, I'm being better, I'm behaving better. Right. But I'm not doing it because I want to do it. Right. I'm doing it because I'm scared. Right. Of the consequences. Right. So to me, that's not, I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not really truly doing something when you're doing it out of fear. Right. Right. You, you, you almost feel like I have to do this. It's not by my own will. It's just because I don't want to be punished. Right. It's like, a, a, a reactive instead of coming from your own action. Exactly. And I think that's happens to a lot of children mm -hmm. um, growing up. And I think that's why a lot of children get to a certain age and they go the other direction because they're so tired of living in this fearful place right. that they just like whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to do what I want to do instead of walking on eggshells my whole life right. and being involved in this. You know, I'm scared every day that I'm not doing the right thing. And I'm gonna get punished for it. Right. And I don't I don't think that's right. So what happened was I in my older teens, um, just like I was saying, I just went the opposite way. I just went the opposite way, started hanging out with people, all different types of people, ended up, you know, selling drugs and 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 doing other things. And by the time it was all said and done, I'm I'm sitting here, I'm an alcoholic. How did this happen? Right. But a lot of times. Even when I was doing it, I didn't consider myself an alcoholic. Right. Not only till I really had to look at my full body of work that I can realize that I was 100 percent an alcoholic. Right. Because I was functioning and I was doing things that other people were doing. I was going to the clubs and you know hanging out. We weren't alcoholics. We just we just drank a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? We That's weren't alcoholics. The story we tell ourselves, right? <laughs> we weren't alcoholics. We just would you know, start drinking at 11 and, and drink all night till four or five in the morning, you know, yeah. four or five days a week. You know, we're not alcoholic. Only time I ever really took a break is when my body was feeling so beat up. I had to stop. You know what I mean? It, it got to yeah. a point where it's like, I, I need a break right now. But as soon as, you know, that break was over and I started feeling better, I'm right back at it. Right. And everybody started going to prison. And I moved from the spot that, that I was in. Um, up in a little place called Humboldt County up in Northern California. And I moved to Oakland in the 90s. And I was still doing my thing, um, in, but it in, in a different way. But I was still doing And I did that for tw almost 20, let me see, I got there in about 95. I did that for about 15, six, 15 years. I continued with the same lifestyle that I did before I moved. And then when I got to the age of, and, and luckily I avoided prison. I don't know how that happened. I can tell you so many stories about how I had gun on me and they didn't find it. I had drugs on me, they didn't find it every single time. And I thought that was a blessing mm -hmm. because I tell you the truth, I was scared of prison too. Mm -hmm. so I thought that was a blessing, but I think a lot of times when people go to prison, they get to give their bodies a break. Right. You know, at least, at least for, you know, a short period of time, sometime a long period of time. I know several people that got, you know, multiple, multiple years in prison. But, you know, and a lot of times that's a blessing. A lot of times people find peace in prison. A lot of times mm -hmm. people wake up in prison mm -hmm. because they're almost forced or put into a situation where you're either going to go one way or the other. It's like not in, in between stays there. Right. So you're in the room by yourself, small room by yourself with your thoughts, all these different things. I think a lot of times people when they're forced into a situation, they they tap in, they go inside. Like a forced meditation almost. You know, a, 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 the only place you've got to go is inside to find- That's it, you have nowhere to go. You have yeah. nowhere to go. And I really believe when people go in there and they say they found religion or they found this or they found that, they did, they, they realized there was something else. Right. But they didn't, a lot of them times they don't fully tap in. And then when they get out, they go right back to doing what they were doing. Right. Right, but they, but they had a glimpse Yes. Of something that was greater in themselves or in this world while they were there. And it was true. And a lot of people say, well, what'd you do? Find religion. That was real to them at that time. Right. They right. seen something right. other than what they were experiencing on this planet. There was something else. There was something more. Yes. 
so like I said, I thought that was a blessing not going to going to prison. But when I hit 38, um, I was in Miami doing my thing and I had this my body started. I was bleeding. I was I was I was urinating blood after a night of partying. And I was just like, this is all I need. I'm already depressed. I'm, I'm already don't have a purpose. So, so I thought. Where am I going? This it's like when you look at your life and then you go, where's this going? Right. This can't be it. Doing this every day for how long? I mean, this is already old. You know, I'm only 38, and I'm like, this this whole lifestyle is just already old. What what is it? What is it about? And I think a lot of times the universe will give you. They it's gonna tap you at first, and it's and them taps are gonna get a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. And and a little bit louder, a little bit right. And and hopefully that volume doesn't crush you, bring you down, or leave you leaving right. this planet. You know? Right. Exactly. And so, I mean, even looking back now, I see all of the signs that were there. If I was a little bit tuned in, I could have got them. Right. You know what I'm saying? I would have realized what that was. But I needed a bigger sign. <laughs> and a lot of times it comes like this. It comes something that's it forces you to go, okay, what 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 are you doing? What is what is your life all about? What are you gonna right. do next? Right. Where's so, the value in this life? It's it's not in these things because that isn't working for me. It's not on you know, these all the stuff that people say that would be good, fame or money or whatever. That's that's not it, you know, because I see <laughs> look, depression can go deep 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 and i know it was for me um i had severe depression to the point where i attempted to take my life multiple times i wanted the pain to stop and i know a lot of people use drugs and alcohol like i did like you did to try to deal with that pain to try to make sense of god why am i feeling this much pain and for me that light bulb moment where someone helped me release that pain was a release of suffering that I said, oh my God, what am I doing to create suffering in the world? And how can I stop contributing to that? You know, I felt so thankful that I got a second chance at life. And I know you describe it. It's like you got you got angels over your shoulder. Somebody's looking out for you, right? <laughs> I know I felt the same way. I'm like, why are other people in a similar situation that I am and, and nothing's happening to me. I'm, I'm still healthy. I'm still, you know, I've still got my health. I'm not in jail. Well, you know, why? And you have to go inside to ask yourself why. And, and I know you and I both came to an aha moment in meditation to talk about yours. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do at this point, mm-hmm. right? After this happened, I was really in a low, low, low place. And I knew that alcohol, was my crutch. I didn't want to know that, but I knew that, you know, I didn't want to go, well, I really need alcohol so I don't feel a certain way, but that's really what it was because every time I started to drink, I I became neutral. I didn't have, and and not only neutral, but I learned later was that um, alcohol or any other drug, and this is very interesting and I'm sure you've heard of this before, Alcohol or other drugs don't give you a high. It just suppresses lower emotional states. Yes. So you're really tapping into who you really are, but it's through a chemical or a drug. Right. Which has the opposite effect when you're off of them. Right. So it's almost like fool's gold. You know what I mean? You're really experiencing that high, but now you really have to experience the opposite swing of this high. Right. You're going to come all the way back. Right. (laughs) So. Through meditation, I, I don't even know why I thought about meditating, but it came to my mind and I started sitting down and I'm like, this is going to be hard. And I didn't stop right away. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't stop right away. I kept drinking mm. and I kept having the same symptoms. And I'm like, mm. and I kept getting more depressed. I'm like, oh my God. Mm. You know, my baby was just born and I'm like, what is it? I don't think I can do this. Mm. So, you know, I smoked cigarettes too at that time. So after, when I stopped, drinking one night after a party i said i have to do it this there's no other way i have to stop this so i did i forced a stop 
and then and then soon after I started meditating, but I was still smoking cigarettes. I was compensating for the lack of, and I usually wasn't a smoker by by myself. I, I usually only smoke when I drank, mm -hmm. but when I stopped drinking, I said I have to do something. It's so right. almost like nervous energy where yeah. I could not just be off nothing, right? I had to be doing something, right? Whether it be whatever it is, it has. To, I, I cannot <laughs> be with myself. So I did that yeah. for a year too while I was meditating. And then finally I stopped that. And then as I started to continue to meditate, like layers, I started to peel the onion. Mm. I started, it just layer after layer after layer. Then I started to realize what an impact, just healing trauma that now I know can be passed from generation to generation to generation. If not healed, it just gets passed down. Like your genes actually change. Yes. Your genes can actually change and be sent to your kids. Yes. Through trauma, who I didn't know anything about this. Right. right. So I know, especially in the black community, we have to understand as black people. And I talked to someone the other day. I said, you know what? Slavery was only a hundred years before I was born. Only 100 years, mm -hmm. less than our combined age, right? Before I was born, people said it was so long ago. That's a few generations, right? How were be how were how much trauma is involved in this whole experience, if that's what you want to call it? Right. How much trauma has been passed down to all of us through that experience? How much un how much healing do we need in our communities? Agreed. Right. So we don't even know why we're angry. A lot of times we don't know what's going on. Yeah. And now it all makes sense. There's so much healing needs to take place. And it was within myself, too. And, and to understand how my dad not being there affected me. I still get that to this day. Like my neighbor came over and, and he's like a little handyman. Right. He knows how to use tools and build stuff and do stuff like that. And, and he's wondering why I don't know how to do stuff like that. Well, no one showed me how to do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? There was no male there to show me any. My mom didn't do that. Right. Now, if you want me to, to weigh out some drugs, I can do that. Right. Exactly. You know, I, I can drink with the best of them. Right. But no one showed me these things that people take for granted when they have a father figure. Right. A mother cannot teach a boy how to be a man. Right. No matter how hard she works. She can't do that. We don't look at mothers the same way as we look at fathers. We don't look at females the same way we look at males. So if there might have been someone there to, and my, I mean, to be honest, the things I heard about my father was, was not good. Right. It wasn't good. But I understand that everybody can change. I did it. Yeah, you did it. Did. But if he's not around, there's no changing. You see what I'm saying? So my other kids seen a different person than my youngest daughter. So and my my father, as you know, took his own life through alcohol, too. And uh, I was 18. I was uh, he died three days before my birthday and uh, my 18th birthday. And um, and he was not there. He was in the bottle, so to speak. And he was not there. He was not present for me, even when he was physically present. Mm -hmm. He wasn't mentally or emotionally present. And that was that was a tough part for me. One, in losing him. And then two, you know, being kind of almost angry at somebody you love, you know, mm -hmm. is such a confusing emotion, this push and pull. Like, I was angry for his actions, but I loved him as my father, you know. And I know he loved me, but... For me, so much of that anger just started blocking my my ability to feel the love for him. And is that anger started to build up that frustration, that disappointment that he's not there for me now, you know, really kind of pushed me back inside myself. And that clouded, that started to just shrink down my own ability to love anything, to be connected to myself, to be connected to others in real relationships. Uh, to be connected with nature, it was just, I was losing all the connection. 
because I was stifling it, surrounded by this anger and this frustration and disappointment and hurt. Um, it, I didn't know where to go with it. And it wasn't until somebody said, look, this is not your fault, but you have to take responsibility from releasing yourself from it. And you are so right. It's not our fault, but it's our responsibility. It is. And we know better now, yeah. but at the time we didn't, right? If, if we can just say, we don't know exactly what our parents went through. Right. Right. So they're, it's like they're healing from some, or, or need to heal from some things. Right. Or they haven't, whatever, there had to be obvious issues if he was in the bottle. Right. What pain was he suffering? Correct. You know, we always try to, to, to say, make it about ourselves. Right. Like we're always the victim here. Yeah. And if he probably would have told you some of the stories about himself, right? you probably wouldn't think that you were the victim anymore. No, and it wasn't until I released my anger that I saw how much he was really trying to show me he loved me, how much he was really hurting and frustrated that he couldn't find the answers on how to live a happy life, that he was struggling with that. And I wasn't seeing his pain. I was just seeing his absence. And when I let go of my pain, I could see him. And man, that just, I just busted out in tears so hard. I cried solidly for a half hour till my gut and cheeks were just in pain from, from dry heaving. Yeah, tears. that's what holding all that energy. All oh, that, just like, like yeah. a damn Austin, you know? Yeah. But yeah, and then you can turn the whole thing around when you can empathy. I love that shirt that you have that says empathy on it. Because to me, that is the core of what being vegan is all about, is connecting to the suffering of something else or someone else or some other being and saying, that's not right. This like, is I wrong. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> like, even with my mother, there were seven of us and just my mother. Now, I'm pretty sure that every one of us blamed her for the situation we were in at one time. Mm -hmm. Then, after you look from a different perspective, seven of us? Right. What an amazing you, woman you, to take care of all seven of you guys. That's a miracle worker right there. <laughs> yeah. Did no one starve to death? Did no one right. die to death? You know, I'm just saying, it's seven? I mean, it's hard enough just having one kid running around in the house. Right. But seven, all with pretty close in age, it just like, yeah. That's that, that's a miracle. I mean, it went from you know me looking like my life sucked growing up. We were super poor to like, wow, I couldn't have done that. And I'm so glad that you've taken these life experiences, not only turned around your own life, but put them in a book, Love Over Fear: A Guide to Peace and Purpose. And congratulations on you know, signing a publishing deal. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, seeing you bring a lot of that wisdom, a lot of that soul searching, a lot of that discovery to help other people um, through your book. Talk to me about your book a little bit, what you went through in that process. Well, it came to me, this is funny, is it's, this is how the universe, universe works. We always have these conversations. <laughs> but, you know, I've been speaking and stuff and, yeah. and, I was going uh, out of town to do a speaking thing. And I say, I'm going to write some stuff down. And I usually don't write. I don't write anything down. I just, I get up there and just let God speak through me. You know, right. I just get up there and speak from my heart. So yes. I start, wrote, wrote, wrote these 10 things down. And I said, I'm going to speak about this stuff. Guess what? I didn't. It was in a notebook somewhere. Uh, a year later, I'm watching a video. It says, you know, when you do your speaking engagements, what do people take away from your speaking engagements? I was like, basically just my loud mouth. You know, that's the only thing they take away. But with speaking to somebody, a lot of times they'll resonate with that message. Yes. But when they leave, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Right? Things come and things go. It's like going to, to a church service every Sunday and you love it. And then you go back on Monday and you're the same person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. You, it, you, you, know, you, hear, you hear the truth, you hear the wisdom, but is it enough to move you to change? That's exactly. the big thing right there.
there. Exactly. So I seen this, it's, I said, well, I'm not really, you know, ha, ha, giving them anything right now. And then them 10 things went boop. I'm like, oh, I'm going to write a book on those 10 things. And I just started writing. And the first one was love. First, the first principle, I write 10, about 10 principles. And the last one is fear. And after I, I, I wrote it and everything was in order, then I would get these confirmations from other things that I read about exactly, it was lining up exactly for what I was saying after the fact. And then, you know, I realized that everything falls under these two umbrellas, love or fear. Not it love or it. it's it love or fear. That is it in a nutshell. You know, I, uh, I got this, this little thing that I put together with love and fear. Oh, look, looks like love got a little rubbed out here. But you this, don't love this, out. this is the person, and you have intention or focus. You can either be facing fear and move away from it, or you can be facing love and going towards it. But That's bottom it. line is you're always going the same damn direction. Yep. It's just what is your mind set on? Is it set on moving away from the fear, or is it set on going towards the love? You That's know? the only things that those are the only two things that exist. One's active, the other is reactive. You react yeah. to fear, you choose an action towards love. You are empowered, you're disempowered in fear. You have personal choice, they have control, whoever's plucking the fear on you, you know? It is internal when you go towards love, it is external driving you to fear. It's so clear. It's mm -hmm. love or fear. Those are your choices. That's, and that's it's it. all up to you. You're still going to go the same direction. Yeah. Why not choose the positive one? <laughs> I mean, it's that's fair it. for you. That's it. It's, it's love or fear. Which way are you going to go? I mean, exactly. if it's the state of the world today, everything that's happening that we don't want to happen is all fear-based. Yes. All of it. it all of it. It so, is. so yeah. So, the, and, and the thing about it is, you know, I used to think back in the day, what's the opposite of love? It's hate. That's what most people think. Yeah, it's not. But it's not. Hate just falls under fear. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Fear, fear is the, 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 the main thing that everything falls, all your negative things that you got going on falls under fear. If you, tra if you track them back, it, all, it always ends up at fear. Right. Because if there is no fear, then you have nothing else but love, right? That's, that's it. All, that's all there is. You know what? Love is? is the power of connection. If you, you know don't what? fear something, you understand the connection because we're all one big soup in this universe. Yeah. Yeah. We are all connected. Everybody. But you know, what, Everybody. you know what fear is, right? All fear is, is an absence of love. Yes, yeah. totally. Totally. That's it. Just like darkness is absence of light. And, and, it's, and it's here, really. The love's always there. It's our mind that says it isn't. That's right. a lie. That's it's always there. That's what we are. We <laughs> exactly. are that. We are. So if we live in our truth, that's where we are. Right. Because everything when, else is not When truth. a being stops loving, they stop living. It's only one letter difference between live and love. And there's a good reason for that. Because if you stop loving, you stop living. And that is what, and, and I see so many people dying, walking around all day long, being in a workplace, coming home, doing all that, but they're dying the whole way. It yeah. is a reduction of love. It is a death, a slow death, but it's a death. You, you can know, see the people who are tapped in, who are plugged in, and who have got are coming from that heart space and are given outward instead of reacting to something happening to them. Man, you can see them living not living they're thriving yes and that's a beautiful thing it's infectious it's empowering it's inspiring and that's one of the things i loved about you when when we connected you know uh online obviously clean machine is a company and my my goal is to try to inspire other people to choose natural to choose healthy to choose to be clean and not do drugs and to choose to be fit so that you can combine the nutrition and the health together and you're such an embodiment of that. You take it further than that. You live the lifestyle. It's your true essence. It's your 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 love coming forward. You know what I mean? I love that about you, brother. Well, thank you so much. And going back to something you said about you can see it in their in their faces. It's 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 even in age has nothing to do with it. No. You know what I'm saying? You can see someone that's 90 years old just lit up because they they figured it out. 
Yes. Right? And you can see someone else is 20 years old that you know they haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. They're just in a in a dark place. You know I what I mean? One, I was one of them. I was there. I, was <laughs> I, was there. there. I know it well. <laughs> and, and the whole and you you really know at the deepest level that your whole life is a lie. Yeah. You know, it, it really, I, at least in my case, I knew what I was doing was not it, but I didn't know what it was. So but I just knew it wasn't you. Doing. And you were like me. Like, I knew I was doing stuff that was really messed up, but I didn't care. And it's, but I knew that wasn't who I was, though. I knew I was a caring soul. I knew I was a loving soul, but I didn't know how to make that real you know what i mean make that manifest. exactly, exactly. <laughs> and in that thing about it is when we come into this earthly plane we know already it's in us already yeah we, got, it's almost we come, like we come like, with the design and the plan like, yeah yeah it's <laughs> almost like a joke it's like we're gonna send you here to earth and you know who you are and then we're gonna give you some people to take care of you to tell you that you're not that <laughs> right. and then we're gonna send you to some schools to tell you you're really not that Right. And then you're going to have to try to figure it all out. And then you go to a workplace and they tell you something wholly different. <laughs> and everybody's putting values on your life. And you're like, that that's not valuable to me. <laughs> and we wonder why everybody's depressed. You know, we wonder why yeah. everybody is. It, you know, when I always see these posts, oh, I need a drink. No, you need to figure out why you feel you need a drink. Yes. That's that's the problem. that's the need right there. Yeah. <laughs> because when you get that answer, you won't need anything else. No, <laughs> no. And I'm coming up on twelve years with, and, and it, it's 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 really like being born again. It's really like a whole different uh, uh, another life mm -hmm. from, from seeing from different eyes. And now, before I couldn't imagine going out without a drink because that's not fun. Now I can't imagine drinking period exactly you're like why would i do that yeah well, it's, it's like when you change internally the rest of the things you did to support that depression or to support that anger to support that thing to validate oh that's why i'm angry you know because of this negative thing so you start gathering all these negative things to support how you're feeling to confirm that yeah i'm right i'm, I'm all those things must be the blame why i'm not feeling so good but when you change that equation around, when you say, no, I am amazing. I came here to give something. I came here to do something with my life that is powerful, that is meaningful, that is purposeful. And I'm going to live that life. When you come from that place, all the rest of that crap just falls down like ashes. It's like, yeah, I don't it, have a purpose it, for that. Yeah. That doesn't serve me. That's mm -hmm. not, get the, get the heck out of my way. I'm a, I got a mission here, you know? Yeah. And you, you know what else happens? And I know you know this as well, is even the people that don't agree with you, even the people that are doing really bad things in the world, we have an understanding. We understand that those people come from the same source as we do. They're yes. just not living their truth. Yes. They are just living from the little self. Yes. We're living from the conditioned self, even our president right now. I can see it as plain as day. Yeah. That is somebody that's been conditioned, programmed so tough. Right. Lying into the fears. Lying into the fears. But and when you, think when about you get so consumed by the fear, the only place to go with them is to push fear out on everybody else. Yeah, but his I'm dad projecting. probably told him, and I'm not, I wasn't in his house, but his dad probably told him, look, you can do what you want to people. This is how you do it. This is how you use people. This is this is how we, we are different. Whatever the story that was given him, he claimed that identity, whatever that was, and whatever came with it. Stepping on people, doing whatever you got to do to, to make money, whatever that is. Right. Just like in the hood, when when you got somebody that's grown up and, and their dad's a drug dealer and they bring him into the game, you know, it's like this is what they know. Right. This is what they know. And this is all they know. This is their program. It's And, it's and even bad. if it's bad, if you can be good at being bad, then it's better than, the, you know, being bad at being bad. Oh, there's so many talented people doing wrong things. Right. Their, their, their attention is focused in the wrong area. But I want to focus some attention on somebody who is extraordinarily talented. She's little. Huh? 
<laughs> that is your daughter. She is such an inspiration. Every time I watch her perform, I get chills. I literally get goosebumps. Just she, and it's not, she is like so clean, so amazing in her physical ability, but it's, it's that spirit she brings through in her performances, that joy on her face, that, that just, God, you, you, it draws you in. Talk, talk, talk to people about. Ishiana. I don't know if you see it. her. Her mother posted something today. Last, this is this is Ishiana in a nutshell. So I think it was last year she had to write about where she wanted to go if she can go anywhere, and it may be the maybe the year before, but she started writing down like France and where she already been there now, but like England. She started writing down a couple more countries, and then she said. She wanted to go to the sixth dimension. And then she said she, <laughs> wanted, she was something about raising her consciousness or something like that. And, and she's but, vegan too as well. Yeah. 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 So that, this is where she, this is where this girl's head is at. You know what I mean? She, she is, is she is a, a little <laughs> star seed, man. She, she is, is so tapped in. She told this was supposed to be to her teacher. Where do you want to go? Sixth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like, that baby. That but yeah, so uh, yeah, she she's been vegan for like I don't know how many years now, but she she watched my healing process. So we both know that if you want somebody to live the right way, you got to show them. Be the you example. Can't tell them. You yeah. cannot tell that words don't mean anything if they're seeing yeah. you do something that's opposite of that. Right. We all know this. Yeah. So during my healing process, I would be in the bathroom meditating a lot. I would be doing a lot of stuff, to, you know, my 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 healing work on myself. And she would always ask me as she was growing up, um, you know, why do you do that? And I would tell her, you know, I'm like, you know, this is something I do every day. I, I want to connect, you know, with spirit. And how come you don't eat meat? And I said, because I don't want to cause harm to any other beings. You know, I just want to live a loving and peaceful life. And she used to ask me these questions at a very young age. We didn't know it at the time, but she was like a little genius. Like she was a reading like super, super young. I mean, just doing stuff that we thought was kind of normal. But when we told other people, they were like, she's doing what? How old is she? <laughs> so, so she, always, she always been doing stuff way before, you know, her, her time. And then when I... She got caught sneaking meat off her food at her mom's house. And I got the call or text, well, why is she doing this? I said, I don't know, but yay. You know, I didn't tell her to stop. I, I'm not the type of person to change what I do and then go, you got to change too. Right. I'm not that person. Tammy was still eating meat. Each, you know, everybody else was. This was just me. When I first told Tammy, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm done with meat. When I first turned vegetarian, she goes, well, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm not doing it. That's what Tammy said. So, you know, I'm not that person to be like, look, you got to do this. You got to do that. So, Ishiana's all into her academics. She's super just, she's the little nerdy, smart kid in the class. Mm -hmm. And her mom was like, you need to move your body or do something. You know, I'm going to give you some options here. So, we knew team sports like baseball and stuff. That was her softball. That wasn't going to be it. She wasn't like a team sport type of person. So, her mom said, well, you know, you want to do this tumbling class? And she's like, okay, I'll do the tumbling class. Now this was just a regular front car, front roll type of tumbling class, right? You just do a little forward roll and you stand up and raise your hand, that type of thing. So she started doing that. She couldn't even do a cartwheel or nothing. So after the first year, she started making these huge improvements and she got put on, started on a level eight with her partner, Jalen. And we're like, level eight, that's a high level to start on. And then the next year, she went up to level 10. And in the same year, she went to elite. So in the middle of the year, they bumped up all the way to elite. Wow. And then they got chose for the USA national, the USA gymnastics team. Wow. This was in two and a half years. They rising. never lost. That's not, a, that's not a rising star. That's a shooting star. <laughs> yeah, they never lost. Not one time did her and her partner lose during the whole wow. time they were together. Wow. Now, if you know Ishiana and you know what she looks like, she has a dancer's body, not a gymnast body. 
Right. She has a short torso and she's super long limbed. And anybody right. knows about gymnastics, they're usually like compact, right. short and thick. So right. she's super long. So some of the challenging things she had to go through is when she was doing her front tucks and her flips and stuff like that, it takes a lot to pull them long legs and arms in to get that mm -hmm. momentum. But she did it. Uh, she went international this last year, went to London, won there. Wow. Uh, like I said, they never, they never lost. She was getting ready to go to Switzerland for the Olympics of their sport, but it got shut down. So I think her career might be over as far as that, but her, her physical things and her gymnastics, that, that is like on the low end of the totem pole <laughs> for me and that girl. She's here to really change the planet. We all are, but which way are we going to change it? Right. So your, your presence on this planet is going to have an impact on the collective consciousness of this whole planet, but which way is it going to have an impact? Right. So we have to know that everybody here is contributing to this global thing that we got going on. And if and we that's, all that's it. It, it's it's finding what your groove is, what you feel best at doing. Like um, uh, who is it? Jo uh, Joseph Campbell used to say, "Follow your bliss. Whatever that makes you the happiest at doing something, do that because you're going to do it better than anybody else." Absolutely, a <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So you know, so if you're here and you're bringing a low vibration, you're making. I got a a, a little thing I have in my book, it's all, called, we're all like a, a pot of soup. We're all bringing our own little flavors to this soup, right? right. So what kind of flavor are you gonna bring to this soup? Exactly. Right. Just think about it, just think about it. I know there's a lot of compassionate people probably watching or or is gonna watch this. Just think about if you're really living that truth, if you're really living from a place of love and compassion, who would there be to fight with if everybody else was doing the same? Mm -hmm. Who would you, who would you, who would there be to kill? Who would there be to war with? And it's just like one person at a time doing their own work. Yeah. One person at a time doing their own work. And I think that's why I was chose to be a messenger because this is a message that needs to be, it needs to be expressed. It's like, if you, you fix you, you fix the world. Right? That's it. The best way you can help others is by helping yourself. Oh, man. <laughs> you, you do that inner work and you're literally changing the world for the better. Yes. No pressure. But that's what you're doing. <laughs> but it, it, when you realize, when you start tapping into that and you make changes and you see the way people respond to you coming from a better place, it is so rewarding. It is so energizing that you you the only question that i hear from people who who get it who who turn their inner light bulb on is why didn't i do this sooner you know i don't know how many people who who become vegan and go why did i not see this before it's and so obvious. it's so clear it's right. so perfect why was i not doing this before because There's you a didn't lot know of programming it. out there yeah There's you didn't lot. know you don't know what you don't know Right. And, and, and like I said, it's almost like this. When you when you buy a new car that you went looking at, now you see them everywhere. Yeah, it's, like, exactly. it's now in your awareness. It's now in your, that's it. It's not yeah. there's more of them. It's yeah. now, now that's part of your reality right now. Right, right. Right? So whatever you focus on is what you're going to see. And that's what I realized and learned. It's like, there's so much beauty and in in the world that if we focus our attention there yes. then we'll have a beautiful life but yeah. and we'll, bring it, we'll see that in ourselves we'll see it in others and we'll bring it up in others because that's where we're putting our attention when you stare at if you're ever in a room with other people in it and you start staring at something everybody else is going to start looking at what you're looking at <laughs> you know what i mean i should so do that you put your focus of your energy people will look and see where you're putting their energy. And if you can put that in a high vibrational focus, other people will dial into that on their own levels, not saying it's, it's a, you know, it's a guarantee for everyone, but they will. But you, you know, you have a, you really, you can feel when you're really in a place of uh, a high vibrational place, you yes. can feel that you feel yes. light, you feel like connected. And yes. I was once in a, um, in the coffee shop and someone had dropped some keys 
And I was like, hey, you dropped your keys. And I, you know, I, I, the person bent down and picked them up. So another person that was not there, not that person that picked the keys up, walked up over to me. And he goes, all I did was pick up the key. I would t- tell that person her keys had failed and then sat back down and was doing my thing. I love your energy. I'm like, like how do you even see my energy? I just said the keys fell. You know what I'm saying? But when you're holding that type of energy, yes, there's 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 something that comes. There's a field around you. Yes, there's something around you because I know when I'm really tapped in and I go out, people seem friendlier. Yes, they approach me more. Yes, right. I, I guess I, I'm more inviting. I'm more wide open. My heart space is more wide open. Yes, and, and, and instead of contracted. And, and I guess you can feel that or see that. So, you know, people that I never would thought even talk to me would just come up and just start striking up a conversation. It's a and, beautiful thing, man. It yeah. is a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, let me, um, let's uh, get uh, people who really want to continue following you, how to follow you on Facebook and Instagram, share your links with everybody so they can tune in. Because hey, if you're listening to this and you like what you're hearing from Monk, he is amazing. His posts are, are so positive, so about the love and the centered. And check him out on Facebook and Instagram. Tell him your, your links. So on Instagram, it's monk underscore eternal. On Facebook, it's vegan monk. And I also have a landing page, monketernal.com, if you want to go there. Awesome. And and when will the book be available and how can they get it? Uh, we're looking at uh, November. November for for the release date. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but um, um, I, I really I hope really, you have one signed copy in there for a friend of yours. Oh man, I, not in Florida. If that's what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, I got you. Yeah, I, got <laughs> I know you. you do. Yeah, but I mean, I I really really believe I 100 that it's going to help a lot of people, um, and maybe show them things that I didn't see when I was st- stuck in my my place that I was stuck in. You know, I, I mean, I, I'd never read a whole book until within the last 10, 10 years. <laughs> that, w- that wasn't my interest, even in school, Cliff Notes. You know, whatever, whatever I had to do, I wasn't gonna read a whole book. Mm-hmm. And when you change yourself, your interests change. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not reading or writing, and not because I have to, it's because I'm I'm, I'm ready to I, I want more knowledge. I want I want I want to grow still. Yes. I'm not done. Well, I, I like this this uh, the guide to peace and purpose because really a lot of people hear about other people living with purpose, but they don't know how to get there. They don't know what the steps are. It's like when I first became vegan. It's like okay, now what do I do? What do I eat? How do I do things? You know, where do I go? What the, all the questions have to be filled in. Like when you coming an athlete, it's like, how do you work out that gets you the right? It's a learning process. You got to adapt to these things. And I love that you have taken your life's experience and put them out in a, a laid out way where people can actually do the how to <laughs> not just yeah. not just the OK, I know that's the right thing. I know that's where I want to go. But how do I get there? How do I make the steps? You know? Yeah, it's very it's very practical. Yes. You know, I, you know, I talked about self-love and unconditional love and all love falls under the same unconditional love umbrella. But it's just where that love is directed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So sure. self love is directed. That unconditional love is directed towards yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the hardest things to ever do is to love yourself unconditionally, because we there's so much shame and guilt and blame that we. Yeah. We're so hard on ourselves, and we can't do that. We can't. We can't live a, a happy life when we constantly blame and shame ourselves. Right. We and we also can't give the love that we need to give to others when we're living in a place. We from- we can't be the powerful, beautiful, loving human beings that we are if we are believing the value judgments that other people are putting on us. You know, we have to shake that and say, no, that's not true. I am here. I am a good person. I am a loving person. And I am going to be that and live that life. 
it, it, it takes a lot because there's constantly the social media, the news going on, the negative, 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 you know, and you really have to say, wait a minute, I want something better for my life and I want something better for others. Because when you apply your life, when, when I made that change a long time ago, when that light bulb came on for me, when my heart opened up and I became vegan, I not only became vegan at that moment for the rest of my life, that was a done deal. But I also said, I'm committing the rest of my life to helping others. It's about the service to others. All I was focused on was how I survive in this world, how the world works for me. You know, it's all about when I turned that conversation around, when I got happy with myself, when I believed in the love that I have to offer, it's not what did I come here to get, it's what did I come here to give? Because in giving, that's where I find my joy. Mm, and not for everyone, but for me, there is nothing that I've ever gotten that compares to the joy that I see on somebody else's face in thankfulness. That to me is the most rewarding experience. Ever. That's, the, that's the question we should be asking every day. How can I serve? Yes. When you do that, your life really changes. And that's one and of the things I talk about in the book is ser- being a service. That's what we're here for. It is. And, and I think we the narrative has been that serving others means you're losing right? They're getting something and you're not. And there's nothing that could be further from the truth. That's the lie that they want to tell you so that you're serving them. Mm. You know, the, the people who own businesses, the people that are in power, the people that are in politics, they want to control and they can't control people who are empowered. If you're empowered, they ain't no controlling me. I'm doing, I'm here for what I'm here for. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, as always, I love talking with you, brother. I'm so glad to have this. We'll have more uh, times of you on, and I hope there's more. Maybe we should have you back definitely when you do your book launch because I want to make sure that gets out there. And uh, uh, any parting words of wisdom for anybody uh, watching? Um, uh, words of wisdom. Let me see if I can put together a couple words. I'm not too good with words, you know. I didn't go to school. <laughs> you just wrote a book. <laughs> I don't, you know, I didn't go to school that many years. So words, I would have to say that um, all the answers you already have. Mm-hmm. There's nothing outside of you that can help you as much as what's inside of you that can help yes. you. You don't have to go anywhere to get the answers. The answers are there. Just know it. And I think that's all I have to say. We look to too many other things, people. I mean, we give our power away. We do. Don't, and even, I'm not, and I'm not down on religion because religion is good and it's great for a lot of people, but don't give your power away. Right. Don't give it, put it in the hands of someone else. Just know that you have it within you right now. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. Love, uh, the more you give is the more you get. And that's a wonderful thing. It's unlike money. You give away money, you don't have any. (laughs) But you give away love, you just keep getting more. And because that love comes back to you in so many ways. And if you can be open to the ways that love comes back to you, keep that channel open, keep letting it flow and just enjoy the ride because it's a beautiful one when you tap into that energy man. yes indeed thanks so much for coming on thanks I'm for having me with you brother thanks for having me you don't like to take my phone calls and stuff so i guess it's <laughs> not true it's the only way i can talk to you so we might have to do this every day <sighs> i'm down with that calling on the phone <laughs> Give my best to Tammy and Ishii and uh, love you, brother. Thanks love so you much too. for coming Peace. on. All right.